Hello, good evening, Tribuners. Welcome back with Mimutiara in Indonesian News of Tribunal Home. We will present you an updating and interesting information from every place in Indonesia. And here, the complete news. The first news comes from Central Banka. Strong winds caused two houses to be badly damaged. Building debris was seen thrown across a house in Batu Behelo, village Pangkalan Baru District, Central Bangka Regency. The former ruins of the walls and tiles have not been completely cleaned. This condition is the result of a violent tornado that struck the houses in the local area on Friday, March 11, 2022, in the evening. The incident began when Lydia was 23 years old about to close her eyes. Suddenly, Flaber gasped when he heard a roar. In her panic, Lydia, who was pregnant, admitted that she had fallen while trying to save herself from the fierce hurricane that was hitting her residence. Within seconds, the roof of the house fell apart, while several other building materials collapsed instantly. The hurricane that damaged this house really could not be forgotten. Moreover, back then he had faced this disaster alone. His father and husband at that time were at work, alias were not at home. Before the hurricane hit his house, he ran accompanied by strong winds for swept this residential area. The next news comes from East Nusa Tenggara Province. Discovery of bodies under the Keva Menalu Bridge. The identity of the body found under the Kilometer 4 Bridge South Keva Menalu Village, Keva Menalu City District, North Central Timor Regency was finally detected. The victim, identified as Dominico Sanak, at 71 years old, was a resident of Ben Pasi Village, Keva Menalu City District, North Central Timor Regency, is Nusa Tenggara Province. This was conveyed by the victim's wife, Lucia Sasi, when met by postkupang.com on Friday, March 11, 2022, at the Keva Menamu General Hospital. According to him, the victim has not had problems with other people and always goes out of the house to visit relatives. Lucia said the victim was known to have a history of stroke and often had mental disorders. He recounted, that the victim had left his house since Thursday, March 10, 2022, in the afternoon. The victim still had asked the purpose of the victim's departure but was not given an answer. After receiving information on the discovery of the body, his party rushed to the Kefa Menanu General Hospital to confirm the identity of the victim. The reason is, after leaving the house, the victim has not returned to his house. Furthermore, Lucia said that her party accepted that the death of the victim and refused it to perform an autopsy on the victim's body. The next news is strong winds hit two buildings in Bogor. The steam washing plant in the Pabuaran village Cibinong district Bogor Agency was damaged by a fallen tree on Monday, March 7, 2022. The incident occurred at around 20 minutes past 9 a.m. when strong winds hit the Cibinong area. Due to strong winds, a cherry tree fell on the steam motor was building. The building that was hit by the tree suffered severe damage to the roof. The owner of the house, he said that, reported the matter to the fire department for handling. In about one hour, the tree that hit the building was successfully lifted. Luckily, there were no reports of casualties in the incident. It was known that a tree fell due to strong winds in the Bogor Regency area, previously also occurred on Saturday, March 5, 2022, yesterday, which damaged a shop in the Citerup area. In recent years, extreme weather has hit the Bogor area. The bad weather that has happened lately is usually in the form of strong winds that uproot trees. The health of the data and information section of the Meteorology and Climatology Agency of Dramaga, Hadis Saputra, say that 
the strong winds that occur were were triggered by the change of the seasons. The next news is two women from Madura were arrested by immigration for using fake passport. Two women from Madura, East Java, were arrested by Nunukan immigration when they were caught trying to enter Malaysia using fake passport on Sunday, March 6, 2022. The two women with the initial K were 30 years old and A was 42 years old. It is known that K and A had worked as waiters at a coffee shop in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. Proof that both of them had worked in Malaysia because when they were secured by officer, Key had two passports. One is real and one is fake. Meanwhile, in the hands of A, only a fake passport was found. The head of the second class immigration office of TPI Nunukan, Washington South Dompak, he said that they fly from Surabaya to Tarakan, then cross to Seinyamuk using a speedboat. The mode with fake passport, Washington State, was the first time they had found it. From the confession of the two women who are still victims, there are five of them. The whereabouts of the other are three people are unknown. According to Washington, his original passport had been confirmed directly with the immigration office that issued the passport and it was valid. However, his passport is for tourist purposes. However, when questioned, Officer admitted that he had an original passport which was currently in the hands of the company that facilitated his entry into Malaysia at the time. The next news is 200,000 tons of cooking oil will enter Bangka Belitung. In overcoming the scarcity of cooking oil that occur in Bangka Belitung, Pangkal Pinang Mayor Maulan Aklil asked the public to adopt a healthy lifestyle. Maulan Aklil said that his own healthy lifestyle without oily food and switching to boiled food could be a solution to the scarcity of cooking oil in the market. According to him, food that is processed by boiling has a good impact on the body because it is without cholesterol. Molen, who is also known as Molen Aklil, said that what made people willing to call you up to get one, two, two liters of cooking oil was because they were influenced by panic buying or buying goods in the large quantities. Not to mention the public who are consumed by the issue to the news of cooking oil. So that a handful of Roju elements take advantage of the situation to seek profit loopless. As a result, many people have stock of cooking oil at home and still buy more. He continued, based on data from people of Bangka Belitung, it only needed 0.9 liters of cooking oil, one head of the family in one month. Meanwhile, the population of Bangka Belitung is about 1.3 million people, and the current stock of cooking oil is about 1.4 million liters. It should be more to meet the needs of each month. Usually, this is enough every month now because people are playing that cooking oil is hard to get a lot of cooking oil at home. Molen confirmed that so far, his party has also contacted several cooking oil distributors in Pangkalaran. Today, at least 200,000 tons of cooking oil will enter to Bangka Belitung. Therefore, he advised that public to be wise, especially housewives. Not to panic buying because the stock is still sufficient and the price of cooking oil will not change. The next news is, prices of beef and chicken in Tegal experience an increase. The price of chicken and beef in the traditional market of Tegal city has steadily increased. In the last few days, the prices of both have increased by 5,000 rupiah. Chicken meat from the price of 33,000 rupiah for 1 kilogram has now become 38,000 rupiah for 1 kilogram. Then beef from the price of 125,000 rupiah for 1 kilogram has now become 130,000 rupiah of 1 kilogram. 
A chicken meat trader at the morning market in the Tegal City, Kartini, said that the price of chicken meat has increased in the last two days. Currently, the price is 38,000 rupiah, one kilogram. He said the increase in the price of chicken meat was due to entering Ramadan soon. Usually, prices will continue to cheer, creep up until I'm sorry, until Lebaran. The highest price of chicken meat can reach 40,000 rupiah for one kilogram. Beef trader Wati said that beef also experienced another price increase in the last four days. Now the price has reached 130,000 rupiah for one kilogram. According to Wati, the price of beef began to increase at the end of February 2022. Unlike chicken, Wati explained it, the increase of beef is not due to Ramadan because usually beef prices increase before it, not Ramadan. He held that the increase was due to beef stocks being difficult, as the suppliers say to the trader. Wati hopes that the government can step down and help the community to stabilize beef prices. Within the community and small trader, it seems he considered that the high price caused the people's purchasing power of beef to decrease because the prices of many necessities are also being high, such as cooking oil, gas, soybeans, and so on. And the last news is student demonstration in Mamasa district. The demonstration of tens of students in Mamasad Regency, West Sulawesi, briefly hit up on Friday, March 11, 2022. Chaos almost broke out when the student had an audience with the Mamasa Region, Mr. Ramlan Badawi, and the head of the Mamasa Regional People Representative Council, or San Soleiman Bay, in the region's official hall. Previously, dozens of students from various universities held a demonstration on Amy Silent Street around the location of Mamasa birthday celebration on Friday, March 11, 2022 in the afternoon. This stance of students demanded that the Mamasa Regency government increase infrastructure development at Mamasa 20 years of age. From the observation of tribunsulbar.com, there are two camps of mass action, namely the Mamasa District Student Union and the Mamasa Community Collaboration Movement. After giving speeches, the mass of protesters held, a, held an audience in the Mamasa Region Office Hall. This audience was taught and even from the observation of the tribunesolbar.com journalist, the audience participants were cultic. Calls broke out when one of the students expressed their aspiration, but the head of the Civil Service Police Unit, Wellam, tried to take the microphone that was used. The atmosphere became even more tense when a member of the Mamasa District COVID-19 Task Force, identified as Rudy, was about to throw his fist at a student. Luckily, the head of the Population Control and Family Planning Agency, Ernesto Randan, tried to stop the fist fight. Tension were subdued as the Mamasa Resort Police Chief tried to calm the crowd. Meanwhile, Mamasa Resort Police Chief Police Green Commissioner Ejudan Hari Andreas said his party apologized for the inconvenient cause to its members. Well, that's all the news for today with Mimotiara. Thank you for watching and have a nice day.